I believe that today is a day that God is going to speak to our hearts through the word and his words are powerful. They're powerful. The heavens and the earth, everything that we see in the visible dimension, amen, it hinges upon the words of God spoken uh, in the invisible realm all around us. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say the sound of hope. Amen. Now, have you ever felt discouraged? Maybe you've attempted something and failed at it maybe once or twice, and many things uh, are difficult, require a lot of repetition to get better at, uh, but many times we get discouraged. Who's ever been discouraged? Just me. I'm discouraged a little bit. Last week, we talked about David at Ziklag and how he had encouraged himself in the Lord uh, because he was discouraged at how the enemy attacked him. But you know, sometimes when we're younger in our formative years, there are people that help us to feel discouraged. Sometimes family members or parents or even teachers. Sometimes, uh, I don't know how or why, but a teacher will call a kid stupid or say something negative about them. Um, and uh, it's, it's discouraging. Or maybe someone here, you've been discouraged because you were misunderstood. Maybe you've lost a job or maybe even let go from a job and you felt like, wow, am I just a failure, a loser? I just want to encourage you today uh, that you are a conqueror and you're not just a conqueror in Christ. The scripture says that you are more than a conqueror. In the Greek, it's uh, just one big word of a super over conqueror, uh, amen, which means that in Christ, uh, amen, you, you're above, you're in a realm of victory that's so supernatural, you can't help but win, not because of you, but because Jesus is the winner, hallelujah. And a lot of other people have gone through challenges and look like they were gonna fail, but yet, Things change. Thomas Edison is an example. Um, and of course, we always think of Thomas Edison, the inventor, as super intelligent. But in his early days, in case you didn't know, some of his teachers said that he was too dumb to learn anything and there was no hope for him. Uh, in fact, he stopped his formal education at the age of 12. Can you imagine that? And really, when he started trying to invent things, he didn't just make a light bulb right away. He failed more or less around a thousand times with his inventions. <laughs> um, he even got fired from his first two jobs. So if you've ever been let go from a job, don't be discouraged. Even Thomas Edison got fired from his first two jobs. Uh, in one of the jobs, he accidentally poured out, leaked some acid on his boss's desk. But he didn't let it drag him down. He didn't give up. He could have been discouraged. He kept going. Uh, instead, uh, you know, he ignored all of that negative criticism. Uh, and despite really starting out with nothing, he was penniless as an inventor. Uh, he ended up becoming, as we all know now, really the greatest inventor of his generation. Isn't that amazing? The story of the turnaround. Hallelujah. And from the light bulb to camp, certain uh, movie motion cameras, uh, he created them. And I love this quote from Thomas Edison. Listen to this. You might want to write this down. Every wrong attempt discarded is another step forward. In other words, if you feel like you made a mistake or you misstepped or something went wrong, keep going. As you keep moving forward in God, you're one step closer towards your success. Amen. And so in a way, you need not be discouraged from what seems to be mistakes, but rejoice in knowing uh, that every wrong avenue is an, <laughs> amen, a prodding of the Lord towards the right direction. Amen. That God has a right direction for you. Hallelujah. And so the devil wants you to give up hope and to be discouraged and depressed and downtrodden uh, and feeling horrible and can get into the mully grubs. But God wants you to walk in hope. Everybody say the sound of hope. I believe there's a sound coming from heaven, the voice of the Lord to encourage our hearts today. Proverbs 13, 12 tells us that hope deferred can make the heart sick. Amen. So if you have hope for something and it doesn't happen, doesn't happen, then you can begin to feel like you're sick through disappointment. And the second half of the verse says, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, when God comes through, hallelujah, 
you'll see the blessing of the Lord uh, and that tree of life manifest in your life. Hallelujah. So hope gives you, uh, amen, a sense of something to look ahead for, to look towards in the future that God is going to do. Praise God that he, amen, gives us a hope and a future. Uh, Amen. That's why when you watch on the news and you hear these stories of someone who shipwrecked or their boat went down and they're out like treading water and these guys that survive, almost all of them will always say that they never gave up hope, that they somehow they knew they were going to be rescued or they knew they were going to make it or they refused to die. Something about uh, just that willpower and determination of hope can push you into the realm of victory. Amen. And so often that is what separates the winners from the losers is simply this revelation of don't quit. Don't quit. The devil wants you to quit. And God says, keep going. And it's not just the power to survive. Amen. That's important. But God wants to take you from survival, from surviving to thriving. He wants to take you into a dimension of success and of victory and of blessing and of overcoming where you are. Hallelujah. God wants to bless your life with hope today. Amen. So if you, uh, amen, have that hope deferred situation, maybe you're here today and there's something you had hoped for and it hasn't happened. And I want to encourage you, amen, to not give up and to be steadfast in your hope and to continue to believe because God is able and his promise is yes and amen. And like we just sang, the Lord never fails. Amen. He is able. Hallelujah. And he wants to move on your behalf. And you know, the promises of God, they come not just by faith. Yes, we are people of faith and we are people of hope, but it's not just faith. It's also through patience. Amen. All of those great giants of faith in the book of Hebrews, they received the promise of God, not just by faith, but also by their patience, their ability to wait for the timing of God. There's so many things we have to learn to be patient about, to be willing to wait for. Uh, Amen. Some of you have to wait for, uh, amen, the right timing for, you know, for you to complete a degree in school or, or the right timing for certain things to occur before something else can take place. And it's a part of life. It's just like when they launch uh, those uh, rocket ships and space shuttles and things like that into space. They don't just send them out any old time. There are windows of opportunity. That's the right timing. God is the same way. In God, there is a right timing. That's the fullness of time. That's God's time. And we have to be, amen, waiting and watchful for the timing of the Lord so that the word of God can come to pass. It's not just having the word that's going to propel you into that divine destiny, but it's also discerning and recognizing the timing of God so that you can step through the open door at the right time. Amen. So there's a timing, there's a tempo, there's a rhythm uh, to the kingdom and really to life in the kingdom, in which the Spirit of God leads us uh, to be. Sometimes maybe you felt like something great happened in your life, and you thought, I just was at the right place at the right time. Uh, Recently, something like that happened to me. I I was uh, at uh, a church uh, that I was visiting in Texas, and uh, when I went in to see the church, it was kind of a newer building. I was really amazed by the architecture of the building and the decor. It was just excellent. It was beautiful, very contemporary because it was newer, of course. And so, but the, the design work was amazing. And I loved, like, I checked out the Children's Center and I thought, wow, this place is really great. I'd like to meet the pastor. And so uh, I went down to kind of the switchboard area and, and there was an employee in there. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just leave a little note for the pastor. I don't know, maybe there's some way I could get in touch because I didn't really know the pastor of the church. And so anyways, um, I left a note and then I was just leaving. And as I was kind of going out of the building, me and, and the brother that was with me, we looked inside of the uh, sanctuary because the doors were open. Um, and uh, down on the stage, uh, they were shooting a video. And uh, so I went and I talked to the audio guys that were there and they said, well, the guy on the stage, that's the senior pastor of the church. So I went down uh, to the front and I said, hello. Uh, and would you believe, I wouldn't believe it, the, the, the brother, the pastor, it turned out that he was an old friend of Bishop John and Bishop Ann, that he had preached at Rock Church and he'd been to Washington 
Washington for Jesus. And I thought, oh my gosh, what are the chances of that? You know, I, I just wanted to meet who the pastor was of this, you know, great church. And uh, we had so many mutual friends in common. He even knew Brother Eric Redman. Uh, I just I thought, oh my gosh, so Brother Eric had just written me a prophecy uh, that morning. And I thought, what a coincidence that I would meet this pastor who knows Brother Eric. And it was just like di divine appointments. Who's ever been in a situation where it just feels like God is just connecting the dots and he's connecting your, your relationships, your friendships, open doors of favor. Uh, and, and, and there's a rhythm and a tempo to walking in uh, the kingdom in a way that God's favor will rest on you so that uh, you can avoid disappointment and discouragement and walk in this dimension of divine hope and faith. Because see, hope really is the foundation of faith. Amen. And so God is a God of hope. Hallelujah. So what is hope? By definition, hope is desire with the expectation of getting that which is desired. So it's not just wishful thinking. Now, hold on. Let's talk to say that again. Hope is it is the desire, but with an expectation of getting that which is desired. Some of you have hope for, I don't know, a certain Christmas present. Maybe some of you would have hoped for that Ferrari I saw. <laughs> you know, not me, but I'm just saying different people have hope for different things. But wishful thinking is just saying, yeah, I kind of, that'd be neat. But hope is defined as actually believing that you're going to receive that which your desire is for. Hallelujah. If you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll grant you the desires of your heart. And if you, amen. And I believe that God wants to bless you with the desires, uh, amen, that he's placed in your heart. And he wants to pour out lavishly, abundantly upon you his great blessings. Hallelujah. So you can't really hope for something that you don't expect to receive. You ever hear someone say something uh, like, you know, well, I hope so. And you can kind of tell what they're really saying is that they don't necessarily believe they're going to receive it. The real hope is that it, it's like faith. You believe you're going to receive that desire. Hallelujah. So hope is in a way supernatural because hope connects you with the future that is not yet realized. Amen. Hallelujah. So it helps you to conceive and imagine uh, what could be in God, amen, that is not yet. Just like memories connect you with the past, hope connects you with your future. Hallelujah. Why? Because, amen, there is a sound of hope God is releasing uh, in the earth today. And I believe in our hearts as believers, uh, amen, as the foundation of faith for a great outpouring in this hour. Uh, I was with, uh, how many of y'all remember Pastor Joseph Mwenya? I uh, preached here recently. Amen. I, I, I was with him. I, I was uh, blessed to have lunch with him. And he said, Pastor John, I was getting ready to preach my Sunday morning service. And the Lord gave me a prophetic word for the Rock Church. He said, I was thinking I needed to text it to you. And I said, Lord, why are you giving me a word for Rock Church when I was supposed to be getting ready to preach? He said, so I didn't really text it to you, but I, I want to share with you what God's put in my heart. And so I said, well, yeah, of course, Pastor. Uh, when you, what did God say is the word of the Lord for Rock Church? And he said, he said a lot of things. I'm going to give you the main parts of because um, it was powerful. And he said that there's a move of God uh, for Virginia and for the region, but it can't come uh, without coming with and through the partnership that we're to be a part of it through the Rock Church and that we're to be a part of this great move of God. And, and he said that he really senses that the Lord is saying that this move of God is not for way down in the future, uh, but it literally is for right now in this moment that we're in. And I said, amen, pastor, <laughs> that bears witness in my heart. I really believe that there's such a faith and a hope being released in our hearts that we anticipate God to move uh, in miraculous ways and supernatural ways and unprecedented ways and unbelievable ways, amen, in miraculous ways. And so uh, we're looking to see God pour out his spirit that way upon us, uh, amen. But it won't happen. You can't move in the realm of faith if you have become hopeless and depressed and disappointed and your heart has become sick because you feel your hope has been deferred and we have to step into a realm where we hear the sound of hope again. You know what the sound of hope is? It's the voice of God. If you have a rhema word from Jesus, from the Holy Ghost, from the spirit of the living God, 
Like Bishop Ann says, you can make it through anything. But it's not just surviving the storm. Amen. There's a word for victory to advance God's kingdom. Amen. Into a place of blessing, of prosperity, of abundance, of overcoming. Amen. Of healing, of deliverance, of breaking every chain. Amen. Where addiction can't touch you. Where deception can't approach you. Amen. Where confusion can't vex you, where the devil won't, can't even try to mess with you because you walk in such power and authority and victory through Jesus. Amen. That you are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. So God wants to restore that foundation of hope where Satan has worked so hard to rob you and to steal it from your life. Hallelujah. Let me show you something from Romans chapter 15, verse 13 about our God. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Amen. As they put it up on the screen, or you turn there in your Bible, let me share it with you. Now may the God of hope, everybody say hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Selah. Look at it again. Just digest that a little bit. Let that, amen, saturate into your spirit right there. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God wants you to abound in hope, to overflow in hope. For hope to pour out upon you, for hope to pour out through you, to hope to pour out within you. He wants it to flow in your life like a river. Hallelujah. God is the God of hope. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And he wants to release that hope in you today by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't have hope that's supernatural without the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Spirit moving in your life. Hallelujah. That's why it's so important. Amen. That we engage in the life of the Spirit. It's not just about that you spoke in tongues once, whatever, 20 or 30 years ago, and you do it every now and then. And praise the Lord for that. But God wants to advance his saints, his church to the next level, to walk in the supernatural where the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are in operation, the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Amen. The gift of faith. Hallelujah. The supernatural power of God, the working of miracles. God wants to pour out all the gifts of the Spirit in your life at another level. Amen. And maybe some of you have given up hope about uh, walking in that level of power and understanding what that really means and how your life would look and how you would be different in God. Amen. If you walked uh, subjected to and flowing in and surrendered to that supernatural power. Today, I want to encourage you to restore hope in the vision of who God says that you are. Amen. Don't live beneath. Don't settle. Don't sell out. <laughs> Amen. For something less than what God has promised. He's promised you the best. He loves you so much today. He's the God of hope. Amen. Believe and embrace the vision and don't quit. Amen. God wants to touch you today and fill you with this power of the Holy Spirit so that you will abound in hope. Mm, more than enough hope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is more than wishful thinking. Well, well, I hope so. No, 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 no. There's an expectation. I'm talking about a kingdom of God hope, the God of hope's hope abounding in you by the Holy Ghost. It really is. It's similar to faith because it is the foundation of faith and it's connected to faith. And so we are expecting a certain thing to receive that thing that God has promised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. There's no hope without Jesus. There's no hope without the Lord, not real hope. Without God in your life, there's no hope. Thank God for Jesus today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 2.12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But thank the Lord. That was at the time before you knew the Lord. But there may be some of you here today that you don't really know the Lord that way. You know, how you get to heaven depends on who you know. If you know Jesus, 
Your life is surrendered to him. Amen. If you confess Jesus as Lord, you believe that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. You can have this hope. Hallelujah. Jesus is the hope of glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. You know, when people get depressed, suicide in some cases on the rise. Maybe some of you see the stats in certain arenas or areas. And if you read studies, uh, psychological studies on, on, on suicide, um, the, the number one factor um, people mentally is the issue of hopelessness. When they get to a point of hopelessness, when they see no potential positive future or outcome, then the people get to a place of hopelessness. And so we can see the devil's fingerprint because, you know, he kind of is not very creative and always has the same methods generation after generation. And we know from John 10, 10, that the devil hopes to kill. <laughs> he seeks to kill and he wants to destroy and he steal, kill and destroy. Uh, but he's the one behind the depression, the suicide and trying to annihilate man. Why does he hate man so much? I believe it's because man is made in the image of God and he despises that. He hates that and he wants to destroy man really as a way of getting against God or, or doing something against God. But thank the Lord that Jesus came, John 10, 10 again, that we might have life and life more abundantly. And we have the God of hope on our side. Amen. And so we need to, I believe, speak these words of hope. If you're abounding in hope because of the power of the Holy Ghost in your life, I want to encourage you to speak up, declare it, proclaim it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Give a reason quickly. The reason why? Because the reason for the hope that is on the inside of you. Oh, when was the last time someone heard your testimony? When was the last time someone heard you proclaim the goodness of God? Look how Jesus changed my life. Hallelujah. You don't need a pulpit to preach the gospel. God has given you this whole world, your sphere of influence, your family members, co-workers or employees or your boss or whoever. There are people around you every day. That is your mission field. God has activated you. He's called you. He's launched you forth. You're a secret agent for Jesus. You're a weapon in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Let God shine bright through you that everywhere you go, you can, you don't know, you might give a word. I'll tell you what, the, uh, Pastor Moenia was telling me this story about a man who came to his church. He'd never seen him before. And uh, so he, he came up and he asked him, have you been to the church before? He said, no, I haven't. And he said, but uh, you know, one of your parishioners invited me. I know him uh, and he invited me to come. So I came and he said, whoa. And he said, the, the Lord showed me that um, this last week, you had a gun to your head. And he said, the guy started shaking. He said, how did you know? He said, I was going to kill myself. I've been thinking about suicide. And when I got invited to church, I thought, well, I'll wait to go to church and I'll kill myself after. And, and so I thought, oh my gosh. And he gave him such a word of hope and encouragement. And he said how the man's life completely turned around. He got, you know, ministered to and saved and eventually became uh, the biggest donor in their church too. He mentioned that too. God really used him uh, financially as a blessing, but God saved his life, saved his life from suicide and depression uh, and destruction. The thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, that's his MO. That's how he operates. Uh, he's evil. He's wicked. He's a dirty devil. But we are the agents of hope. And if the light's not shining, the world's a whole lot darker. Amen. So I just want to encourage you today. Hallelujah. Shine bright. Don't quit. I love Winston Churchill, his famous quote, never, never, never give up. Never, 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 never give up. <laughs> Amen. What a great quote. <laughs> Uh, amen. He also has another quote. If you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> and what he meant by that is you're going to go through. If you're going through a hard time, you're going through. There's another side. It's not that way forever. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll fear no evil. Why? Because the Lord's with you. But also you have the hope of victory because you're not in the valley forever. There's mountaintops. There's mountains to climb in God. Amen. There's mountain peaks to stand on and rejoice and celebrate and declare. Look what the Lord has done. God has blessed me. He's favored me. He's been faithful to me. God is a good God. Amen. And so, yes, there's difficult times, but there's glorious times. Yes, there's dark times, but there's times where God reveals his light and he wants to bless us today with the sound of hope. Hallelujah. How do you receive it? How do you, maybe you feel discouraged today. Maybe Satan somehow has planted that seed of hopelessness in you. Let me give you, uh, amen, some encouragement today about how, real quick, this is practical, how you can receive hope. Um, because sometimes 
we're waiting for something to happen to change our circumstances. And God is saying, no, you, you got to do this. You've got to do something different. If you do something different, then I'm going to move. See, some of us are waiting and nothing's happening. It's like, it's the same. It's the same. It's like that definition of insanity, right? Doing the same things over and over, expecting different results. Uh, but there's something God's waiting for you. To, it, it's like the guy, I told this story before. I love this story. The guy's at work, construction worker. And he's like, I hate these meatloaf sandwiches. Get them every day. Next day, the guy says to his friend, same friend, here we go again, meatloaf sandwich. I hate these meatloaf sandwiches. What do you got? He tells him. Next day, he's at work. Guess what I got today? Meatloaf sandwich. Again. He said, look, man, why don't you tell your wife to make you something different for lunch if you hate meatloaf sandwiches? The guy said, what? I'm not married. He said, I'll make my own lunch. <laughs> Some of you are making your own lunch. You're making your own lunch. You want it to be different. You're complaining about it, but you're making your own lunch. <laughs> God is trying to tell you, you got to do something different. You got to do something different. If you're going to get different results. All right. So number one, I'm going to give you this real quick. Write this down. because We're going to go real fast. Oh, we got to hurry. We got to hurry. Okay. Let me give you some scripture. Romans 15, 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the Bible gives you hope. The word of God gives you hope. Are you reading the word? Are you encountering the word? Are you seeking out the word? Even if you're watching a preacher on YouTube and they're quoting the scripture and preaching a sermon, amen. At least you're getting the word. If you read the Bible, that's the best thing because you could talk to the Lord and ask God to reveal truth through the word for yourself and you're feeding yourself. That's the best way, but you need to get the word. Hope comes from the word. You've got to have the word of God in your life and not just Sunday coming and hearing me preach or someone preach and praise the Lord for that. It may strengthen you, it may encourage you, but we need a daily diet of the word of God every day, every day, every day. Amen. So if you want, amen, word, the, the word of the Lord, you got to hear the word of the Lord. If you're going to have hope, amen. So I'm going to give you like a little acronym. H is here. You got to hear God's word. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 23, Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope. Amen. So you're okay. So not, what does that mean? Okay, so your confession is your declaration that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus changed your life. You have a confession. Jesus was raised from the dead. I believe the Bible. God's changed me. And you hold fast to that because it's a confession of hope. And this is without wavering for he who promises faithful. He's faithful. And, and, and so faithfulness is connected to faith, which is connected to hope. So in other words, we can have hope because of the faithfulness of Jesus. Amen. It's like uh, you can't. <laughs> Be hopeful that something is done by someone that you consider to be faithful because you know this is kind of, you know, their track record, their history and how, you know, if they're loyal. And, and so you can have faith that you have hope in it because they've shown themselves faithful. Well, there's no one more faithful than Jesus. Amen. Because human beings fail. Have you found that out? Yes, human beings fail, including because uh, you may have expectations of people that failed you. But guess what? You're a human being, too. <laughs> And with, we're being perfected, but nobody is yet perfect. Because if you were perfect, you wouldn't need a savior. But because you're imperfect, you need the perfect one to save you and me from our flaws, our sins, our mistakes. We need a savior. Amen. So our hope is in Jesus, who is the faithful one, who's the unfailing one, who is the perfect one, the only one without sin. And he sacrificed his life. He gave himself. He died for you. Who would lay down their life for you, for me? Woo, thank you, Jesus. You got to hear the word. Uh, number two is from Romans chapter four, verse 18. Is O, oh, you got to obey whatever the Lord tells you. Don't just listen. Got to do it. Amen. Giving you the sound of hope today. Listen to what I'm saying. Romans chapter four, verse 18. It's about Abraham. We, we have time to get the whole thing, but we don't. So let's just say, who contrary to hope, in hope believed. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Amen. So Abraham had to obey this word from God that he's going to make him a dad in his old age. Impossible in the natural. And that's what it, it says right there, contrary to hope. 
Have you ever been in a situation that was contrary to hope, that seemed hopeless? God loves those situations to show up and show off, to show himself mighty on behalf of his saints. Amen. He likes to take the impossible because that is the ground for miracles. When something cannot happen, contrary to hope, in hope he believed, in hope he believed. Can you believe in hope when you're in a situation that's contrary to hope? Amen. Remember, in a sense, we're descendants of Abraham by faith, and so therefore we're children of faith and we're people of faith. So like Abraham, we too should demonstrate those faith-like qualities that we can believe the word of the Lord in situations that are contrary to hope, we have hope. Amen. So we got to obey the word. What is God telling you to do? Have you done what God's told you to do? Sometimes God speaks to us. We put it on a shelf. We're not ready or we don't understand it or we feel we don't have the resources uh, or for whatever reason, or we're afraid and we put it on the shelf and the whole time God is waiting and you feel like your life is stalled and it's like someone pushed the pause button and you're not moving forward. If you ever feel like you're not moving forward and it feels like God is silent, ask yourself, what was the last thing God asked me to do? What's the last thing God asked you to do? Have you done it? Amen. Sila. Okay. O is obey. Then P in hope. Amen. I was going to say pray, but amen. We're going to use the P for prophesy <laughs> or proclaim, which proclaiming is a prophecy when you're speaking the Lord's words through you. Amen. Sometimes you got to prophesy to yourself <laughs> a little bit. Like last week, we talked about how David stirred himself up. Even he encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. His, his, his wife couldn't be there to do it. Amen. His brothers couldn't be there to do it. His parents weren't there to do it. His mighty men weren't there to do it. David had to encourage himself, encourage himself when he was all alone. It reminds me of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's vexed, and he's facing uh, an imminent martyrdom. He's going to sacrifice his life and be tortured, and in that moment as he's praying, and he wants his disciples that he's hung out with for three years, just be with me. You know, hang out with me and they're so sleepy. We're so sleepy, Jesus. And, and, and he had to be alone. There's some things you will walk through where it's just you and the Lord. Amen. You know, when Jacob was facing, he was going to see his brother Esau, getting ready to head home to the promised land. Many of you know the story. Um, he sent all his family ahead. He divided them two companies. But that night he was alone and it says he wrestled with an angel, which we believe to be a revelation of Christ, that it was God. It was just him and God. They were wrestling. Jesus said um, in Gethsemane, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. But yet he was alone. And here, amen. Sometimes you've got to prophesy to yourself, kind of like David encouraged himself. Amen. Look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. In other words, Jesus is coming back and there is a resurrection and there is a judgment day and everyone, amen, will be judged. And the saints, uh, everyone will be judged on if they receive Jesus or not, but the saints will be judged uh, on what they did. Uh, amen. And so if we have this hope in us, it says that we purify ourselves and we have to look ahead prophetically uh, to the reality of the word of God in order to encourage ourselves. In other words, this might seem real fundamental and basic, but sometimes we need a refresher. If we really are convinced that Jesus is coming back. Let me ask by a survey. Raise your hand if you believe Jesus is coming back according to the scripture. Okay, all right. That's most of us, but we miss all of us. If you believe that, if you really have a conviction and a faith that Jesus is coming back, it'll change your outlook, your attitude, and it'll change how you live. Jesus is coming. When? Who can tell me when? Well, you could write a book and make millions of dollars if you can really tell when, but we know you can't do that because the scripture is very explicit that nobody knows <laughs> but the Father. And, and we know you're not the Father, so therefore, <laughs> you can still write a book and some people will buy it though, and that's been proven before. But the point is, he's coming back and we may not know when, but what if it's tomorrow? What if it's today? What if it's next week? What if it's next month? Are you ready? 
And so if you really believe it, you live ready. You live in faith. Therefore, that's why the hope of his coming. If, if you believe Jesus is coming back, you can't be depressed. If you believe Jesus is coming back, you can't be defeated. If you believe Jesus is coming back, amen, you can't be disappointed. Because the hope, the revelation that Christ is returning creates such an expectancy and anticipation that God is going to, there's a day coming. He's going to make all wrongs right. He's going to wipe every tear from our eye. He's going to release justice into the earth where there's been injustice. Hallelujah. And he's going to reign forevermore. There's an expectation. It transforms how we live, how we think, how we view the universe is changed by this hope that Jesus is coming back. Ooh, I can't wait. The trumpet's going to sound. The sky is going to split wide open and the Lord of glory shall return. Prophesy to yourself. Jesus is coming back. What kind of saint do I want to be? What kind of reward do I want from heaven? Amen. I hope to hear him declare, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest of the Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh. Do you believe today? Do you believe? That's the hope of his coming. Prophesy. Whew. Okay, and finally, E, we'll close with this. One of your favorite scriptures and one of mine, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Amen. So not only do you got to hear the word of the Lord, H, not only do you got to obey the word of the Lord, O, not only do you got to prophesy to yourself the word of the Lord, P, but letter E, you got to enter into the hope of God for your life and your future. Jeremiah 29, 11, you got to enter into it. You got to do something. Dude, this isn't a concept and a philosophy. You might start that way, but it changes how you live, your actions, your direction, your trajectory, your targets. What are you doing to move in the direction of God's destiny and purpose for your life? Amen. Or even maybe you're in a position where you're not sure what that is yet. But then I suggest you move in the direction to hear God's voice and to know the revelation of his purpose and destiny for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Everybody say hope. Come on, saints, there's a sound of hope in the heavenlies. I hope you have an ear to hear what God is saying to your life today. Amen. He's chosen you. Amen. He's chosen you to reveal the mystery of God in you. Hallelujah. That's what it says in Colossians 1. And that mystery of God is Jesus Christ, who is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand to our feet this morning. Hallelujah. As you're standing up, we're going to pray today that God will take us from where we are to a revelation of hope that will transform us. Hallelujah. Some of you have been discouraged. Some of you have been disappointed. Some of you have been disillusioned. Some of you have become cynical. Some of you have become just so discouraged. But today, God wants you to know there is a sound of hope in the heavenlies and the word of the Lord is being restored in your life. Hallelujah. If you'll hear it, if you'll receive it, God will transform you and take you from where you are to the place of victory that he has ordained for your life. Whoo, he's chosen you today. There's an old quote, listen to this, life with Christ is an endless hope. But life without Christ is a hopeless end. Where's your hope today? Is your hope in the Savior? <clears throat> Sometimes we put our hope in the wrong things. So someone said, well, well, the news said the economy right now in the United States is the best in the history of the world, and so this financial opportunity and all that, all that might be true, but it's not the economy <laughs> that is our hope. It, it could be a bad economy, and it, God can still bless you. Because our hope is it's not in the economy, it's in Jesus. It's in the Lord. Amen. Where's your hope today? Where's your hope? I want to ask you to lift up holy hands to the Lord and just right now, we're going to pray this prayer of a restoration of hope. Father, you see the hands and the hearts of all of your children. Lord, we're all in different places today. God, and we thank you that you're a God of compassion and love. You're a God of grace and of mercy. And Lord, you want us to change, to grow. You want us to step up. God, forgive us, Lord, for wrong choices, compromise, anything that holds us back. Laziness, selfishness, God, forgive us. Let today be a day, God, that we step up above those things that have held us down. 
God, let chains be broken, Lord, today in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would restore the revelation, the hope that we have in you. Hope that undergirds faith. Faith that releases miracles, reveals your promise, moves mountains, changes circumstances. Thank you, Jesus, for you are the God of hope and your word quickens hope into our hearts. The Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord, causes us to abound in hope. God, let hope be restored today. I rebuke every spirit of depression, discouragement, disappointment in the name of Jesus. I break every lie, every deception that like fiery darts has attacked the thoughts and the minds of your sons and daughters. We rebuke the devil. We rebuke the works of darkness. And God, we release in the heavenlies right now, God, the power of the hope of the word of God in the hearts and in the minds and the lives of every one of your children. We thank you, Lord, that your word doesn't fail, that every curse is broken. I thank you, Jesus, for blessings being released, for your power being imparted right now. God, I thank you for transforming us, for changing us, for healing and delivering us, for restoring us, for reconciling us. God, for making us truly the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. Today, we believe and we receive the hope of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on and give the Lord praise.